All right, AP Chem, we're going to do what's called deriving of a formula. So if you're a math junkie like mine, I am, um, you really like math, then you'll start to get into what's called deriving formulas. So in the video, you uh, saw a few different relationships. So for example, they talked about the relationship of pressure and volume always equals a constant. That means that they're always going to be related to each other in the same way. So if the conditions change for one of the variables, the other variable will respond to maintain that ratio that they equal each other. So for example, these two variables are multiplied by each other in this formula. Therefore, they are inversely related. That means that when you have a formula where they are multiplied by each other, that means as one goes up, the other one will respond and go down. So we did this for a couple formula, uh, a couple different variables. Pressure and temperature also equals a constant. That means if you change one of the variables, the other will respond to maintain that ratio as such. These are divided by, so the variables are divided by each other, therefore they are directly related. What directly related means is one goes up the other one will respond by going up also, and they will always equal this constant. We also saw that volume and temperature are related the same way. These are divided by each other, so they're directly related. So if we increase the temperature, the volume would also go up in response. And the last one I think they talked about was Avogadro's law. This is volume and number of moles. So these are also divided by each other. That means as one goes up, the other one will go up in response to that. So now let's combine all of these because we've got pressure, volume, temperature and number of moles. Notice that pressure and volume are on the top and the number of moles and the temperature are on the bottom. These are also going to be related to each other by a constant. So that means if you change one of these, one of the other variables is going to respond and react by changing in order to maintain this constant ratio. This is a special constant here. This special constant here is called R, which is the ideal gas law constant. And that's PV over NT. So it'll always equal a constant. In this case, for us, it's going to be 0 0.08206. And now here's the key. It's liters, atmospheres, per moles, K. So this means that P, in order to be using this number, P is equal to the pressure and it has to be measured in atmospheres because of the ideal gas law constant. V is our volume. And if you look in here, it has to be measured in liters in order to use the ideal gas law constant. If you were given volume in milliliters, you'll have to change it to liters. N is the number of moles. So sometimes you'll see um, your quantity given in grams. You just have to change it to moles. 
And then here is the most important one, and this is temperature. Temperature. has to be in Kelvin, which is Celsius plus 273. The reason for this is that temperature is usually measured in Celsius or Fahrenheit. We don't use Fahrenheit very much in chemistry class. We use Celsius in chemistry class because we can measure that. But the problem with Celsius is that, first of all, you have a zero value for Celsius temperatures and you have negative values for Celsius temperatures. So let's look at this formula. Those of you who are math people, you know that if you had a value of zero for the temperature on the bottom, that makes this undefined and we can't have undefined in real world situations. The other thing is, is if you have a negative temperature, you're going to end up in situations where you have a negative pressure or a negative volume. You cannot have negative values for any of these answers. So make sure that if you see a negative answer, your red flag goes off and you say to yourself, oh, let's check my temperature first. I had to change my temperature to Kelvin in order to be able to use this ideal gas law constant, which is point. 08206. Liters in atmospheres on the top. Moles and K on the bottom. And I'm going to teach you how to use this ideal gas law constant to basically replace the units so that you don't have to remember formulas all the time. So when conditions are changing, they will still maintain this relationship and this is called the combined gas law. So you can do equations with the combined gas law with any one of these variables. If uh, you have a question that says that volume is constant, then the formula just becomes, we just ignore volume. If they give us a formula where temperature is either not mentioned or it's mentioned that temperature is held constant, then the formula just goes on without the temperature. And the same thing with the volume and the temperature. So these all come from the same formula. And they really all come from and this all comes from the fact that this main relationship is always maintained that it is a constant, the ideal gas law constant. These are related to each other. So now here's where we get the ideal gas law. I'm going to rearrange this formula and it says PV equals NRT. And this is the ideal gas law. In order to use the ideal gas law constant of 0 0.08206, volume has to be in liters, pressure has to be in atmospheres, the amount has to be in moles, and the temperature has to be in K. There's other values for the ideal gas law constant, I usually just stick to this one because it's given to you in your reference packet that you'll be allowed to use on the AP exam. So all of this should be first year chemistry review. The ideal gas law constant, the ideal gas law, 
and the combined gas law. If you don't have any experience from this from first year, I'm going to give you guys a couple of each of these types of problems for you to make sure that you can do. And if you need more help, you're going to have to ask for it and get you caught up. Because if you were in honors chemistry the first, uh, the last semester of last year, you might have missed some of this material, but we can get you caught up.